Open School. 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what up? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution's being podcasted, and I am excited. What's going on, people? So good to be back. Appreciate everybody who's tuning in, everybody who's been supporting us, everybody who's been, you know, hollering at me on the, on the, on the gram and on YouTube and everything and just giving love about how helpful this live has been, the questions. Uh, you know how we do it, live consultations. Let's get that number up, Mikey. 347-464-2888. Um, uh, uh, call in, live consultation to ask me anything. I'm here to, I'm here to help. Um, it's uh, Mike, what's going on, bro? You good? I'm good. I'm good. Just waiting for these calls to come in. All right, cool, Excited man. To help. Yeah, man. It's it's dope. Thanks, Mike. Is everybody shout out to Big Mike in the building, baby? Doing what it do block, all day. Block, block. <laughs> it's good to good. It's good to see you, Mike. Always good to see you. Um, Always a pleasure. Uh, live consultation three four seven four six four two eight two seven. The number you know that's the number to call in the consultations. A few things that I we got one already. Jesus, all right, I can't even warm up. Let's do it. Call you're on the air. <laughs> call you're on the air. Can you hear us? Oh, they hung up. Okay. Uh, three four seven four six four two eight two seven. Here's here's a crazy thing, Mike. I was doing some consultations. This week, if y'all need the consultations, don't forget, uh, like and subscribe, hit that bell so every time I go live, y'all y'all can get me. Um, also, um, don't forget the consultations at DanteNero.com. Click on consult and you can book time with me if you if y'all are in a, if you're in a crisis or if you just want to level up, holla at me, I got you. Um, but this is I was I was doing Mike I was doing a bunch of uh, consultations this weekend. And this is something that I had taken for granted on a level that I had no idea because me being an old motherfucker, you know? Um, let me explain. Pe young dudes or dudes who are in the dating scene now believe that texting is the same thing as calling on the phone. Did you? Are you aware of that? I'm aware of that. It's not. But yeah, yeah, there's just it, well, texting's the new way everyone's I mean, like people call this and they're like, Oh, I've been talking to this girl for a while now and you're like, Have you you ask them, have you physically spoken to them? And, no, but like I know her from the apps and stuff, and it's like so you're like planning a life with someone you've never even seen their it's eyes. Insane. So let me I wanna deal with that. First, let me repeat that number three four seven four six four two eight two seven. Time and time again, I've I've several dudes, uh one one guy that I've been working with for a long time. Shout out to my boy Major in the building um but I, a lot of this of which um uh I, I i like this is a a growing theme that guys are not talking to anybody on the phone and they're consistently saying to me i don't talk on the phone because uh the girl the girl said i don't um she goes i i don't really talk on the phone i don't um i i, I just text understand something um i am all about compromise right but i don't understand how you could uh you could want somebody to to munch on your box or give you a blowy but you can't pick up the phone and talk to somebody i mean let, let's just the sheer the sheer understanding of how intimate uh, uh, you know, just you know, just, just smashing, just physically having like, how do you how do you have sex with a person that you literally? This is for women, and especially, how do you let a man take up space in your body cavity, but you don't want to you don't want to have a phone call from him? It's absurd. This is absurd. I guess we got a call in. I think no. Um, it, it's it's absurd to think that this is a and that this is the standard. And I I understand that I'm a older gentleman. I understand that, um, you know, I was around. I was picking up chicks when they was when I had a, I had a rotary phone and I was smashing 
on on a rotary phone. So like you didn't have any of this going on. So I understand that my my idea is very different about communicating, but but I, I want to explain something to you. I've talked about the fact that, a, a, say, for instance, a guy goes out on a date, and the guy will go out, get, find he'll get the girl to go out on a date, and I talk about the the fact that the uh, comfort if you if you go on a date and you don't touch the girl. Like there's no, and I'm not talking about sexually, I'm not talking about grabbing tits and not grabbing ass. I'm just saying you haven't held her hand, you haven't put your arm around her, you haven't, you haven't touched her. Imagine how ridiculous it is to go from no physical or intimate contact to you're at the, 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 the date is over and you're going for a kiss. Like a kiss is a very intimate thing. For you not to deal with the fact that that you you're making this huge chasm of I mean I'm old school but evil can evil jump devil devil jump from no touch and no contact. Dudes will go on a bad date and walk a girl to her door and be like, "This is it." Like she might invite me in, but they have <laughs> no idea that the date just went horrible. Doesn't know how to read. The, understand something? Um. Pussy is like a crock pot. We got to call. Hold on one second. Let me just. Pussy's like a crock pot. You have to put the seasoning in. You got to, you got to let it, and you, you got to slow cook it. You can't, you, you just you don't. You just dump shit and start <laughs> eating. You're going to eat a lot of raw You got to get some salmonella, bro. So, like, but we'll, we'll get back to that again. We got to call her. Let's get it. I'm ready. Call her on the air. Hi, Dante. How are you? I've been meaning to call. I love what you're doing. Thank you, bro. I I who am I speaking I with? First? What's your name? What's your My name? My name is Indira. Indira. I'm Hi, Indira. How are you? I'm good. Okay, talk to me. Well, how can I help you? Well, I don't know. I like what you're doing. I like what you're saying. Men out here are like not being upfront. I've um. I was in a long-term marriage for like 23 years. Now I'm out on the field. Now sort of kind of settling down, but the dating field was just terrible. Okay, let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Uh, you, what's your? You mind me asking what your age is? I'll be 45 in March. Okay, now let me ask you this. It, from what you see, do you think that the dating field is any better for men? No, I don't. Okay, fair enough. I, well, I, but I, nobody's I, speaking on that. I, 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 I absolutely agree with you. Here's my, my, you know, my thoughts on it. I absolutely, we are in a situation where there are no guidelines and nobody is. There's nobody teaching anything to anybody, and there's nobody of any experience or any wisdom that's talking to nobody. How long were you married? Uh, well, I was married. 12 years. I was with him 20, 23 years. Okay. All right. And, uh, and is, did you, when you say people are dishonest, were you, were you, are you talking about him or are you talking about just in general? Everybody. When I was like, when I was, when I got back on the field after I went through my divorce or my separation, cause right. we were together for a long time. We went to the church thing, like the whole thing. Like I'm Puerto Rican and he's black. Uh huh. So I uh I, I grew up in Jersey City and I I've acclimated to I my black culture. I'm gonna say most mm. of the time, you know. Okay. Because I claim black. I'm black Puerto Rican. I got you. And got you. it's just like um you know so I mixed that up. But then I went to the church, the whole church thing, like you know, um uh, the marriage bed and what uh, this what and what that. what kind of what kind of church. Not the nominational, you know, Christian. Okay, so here's my thing. Who was talking about? Who was talking about relationships, in 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 terms of uh, in the church? Like, who was? Did you have a reverend? Did you have a priest? Did you have? Yeah, a... the pastor. The pastor. We actually started with like um, a, a female pastor, and uh -huh. then we went to a where, where there's a pastor with a male and a female, where we thought we would get more, you know, right. round, right. You know, well, I, 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 let me like, let me let me say something too. Um, 
I, I, I sometimes, and this is maybe me blowing my own horn, but a lot of times I will get people that will say to me, "Man, you, you, you know, you're so wise about what you, what you're saying, and what you're saying is just makes so much sense." But the reality of this is that I know what I know because I made mistakes, because I was a hoe in my lifetime, and I had, I just had so much of a cross section of women and situations that I that I could I could discern what worked and what didn't work. I mean, it, I wasn't a genius where it always just worked out for me. I went through my trials and tribulations just like everybody else and my wisdom came from the mistakes and recognizing those mistakes and then figuring out what a solution and what all taking my onus about what happened and what went wrong as well as what was going on wrong or or how I could have changed the situation uh in the context of of whatever relationship I was in so when you say um so uh, so what let, let's get to you like i mean not just the history of this what is your I mean, you're calling in right now to, to say what? Let, let's let's get to that. Oh, just to give you a process. Oh, thank I don't you, hear thank you. many no men out here being so open. And, like, you know, like, I'm open, too. I want to, like, you know, I hold around, too, shit. Right. I feel you. I, I mean, <laughs> all with, I'm going to I'll tell you a, a quick quick story. Like, I, you know, my, my background is that I was a male stripper for 10 years, right? And I don't need your fucking comments about what I look like now, you pieces of shit. <laughs> Just I get you know, I I understand I'm past my prime. I'm not I'm not delusional about. It. But let me I w I, I just wanna say that I had did a I did a show for a woman who had a bachelor party. I remember this was out in Long Island. I'll never forget this. I did the bachelor party and um I'm in some little bathroom off to the side of a huge house, big house and I'm I'm changing, putting my costume on, and the bride comes in, kicks, you know, not kicks, opens the door, comes in the bathroom, and she starts, she's going at me, right? So she start hit, she starts hitting me off with a blowy, right? So I'm getting a blowy in the bathroom, and we get busted by her mother-in-law, okay? Now picture this: this woman is getting married the next day, she's giving me a blowy, the door opens up, it's her mother-in-law. Um, we all, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed. She says to her, you bitch, you in here sucking dick and you didn't call me. And I, I was like, what? Apparently the, the bride and the mother-in-law you was hanging out together and they was, they was screwing dudes and, and, and hoeing around together. So Picture this, the next day, there's a wedding. She's getting ready to marry some dude, and I have had sex with his wife and his mom the day before. Mind you, they invited me to the, you should come to the wedding. You should come and be great. See, I, I, you know, in my mind, just to kind of fit into that, the scope of that, was so crazy because I was like I couldn't believe like my my understanding of you know my mom was a was a church lady who married my dad and you know she all she cared about was my dad her whole life was my dad and um that's what I knew about women and so to see women to acting in this kind of sexual way was shocking to me it was really shocking to me but I mm -hmm. I so you what I what I learned from that is that there is clearly a situation where given certain circumstances and certain situations, people will act out of character. And to be honest, I don't even know if that was out of character, but I'm, I'm, it was just something that I mm -hmm. had never experienced. So when we talk about the, the, um, the dishonesty of men, we got to talk about the dishonesty of women as well. We, talk, we have to talk about yeah. the lack of accountability. We have to talk on both sides. Um, I definitely yeah. think that there are things that women do that men don't do. There's things that men and women do, and there's things that men do that women don't don't do have a have a higher propensity. And I think we have to have that discussion and be it uh, in an honest way. And so, what I'm really trying to do is just have that discussion, just talk about things that nobody else is talking about. And uh, and I'm not just looking for the clickbait 
where I'm saying something, I'm being toxic, or time and time I, I talk about all these relationship shows. It's you either got some guy like a guy like Derek Jackson who is who is lying to women, or a guy like Stephen Harvey who is lying to women and not holding them accountable, or like a guy who a, a bunch of guys who cater to young young angry little men who basically want to say bitches ain't shit, women ain't shit, women. Ain't, and with with really none of that moves the needle. It all that does is is it all that does is stroke each other's ego ego, and it makes it makes what we're already thinking validated. And so I thank you so much for giving me my props. And uh, I, I please, if you can, um, I would I would love it if you would tell your girlfriends and tell you tell people. I always share your videos. <laughs> thank you so much. I share man. it to my male friends because I'll be like, and my ex-husband, I was like, listen to him. <laughs> if you want to be happy next marriage, next person, <laughs> Listen to Dante. I, I, I want to say even stuff. even that is dope. What you just said that you're sharing yeah. it with you, that you have a relationship with him and you got like look, this is nah, something. Yeah, I we we've gotten past that. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah, because when you get past yeah, it, you yeah. realize it. We're it, grown. We're grown. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, and that don't mean that you're grown. It means that you have decided to be grown. You know what I'm saying? Because we all know. Yes. People who are grown who still act like children. I mean, thank you so much, yeah. witness. I really appreciate it. And you, you. helped me out, too, because I, appl I apply. When I hear you talk, yeah, I yeah. apply it to myself, too, and I put myself in that purse. I'm I'm actually now dating somebody, and nice. I've applied some of the boundaries. Nice, nice. That I've heard you say, like, you know, like, nah, okay, we won't talk about it now, but can we talk about it later? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You Not know, those, those boundaries, like, you know, I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning what I unlearned from my 20s. That's, yeah, because there's, because we're asked to be, you know, we're asked to understand these things when we've had no teachers, and, and a lot of times, even our parents, are toxic and, and there was nobody teaching them and 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 so we go through our lives with these perceptions that don't even exist thank you so much darling thank you for calling in yeah. i appreciate thank you thank you all thank right thank you for keep listening for, for the men thank you so much yes i will all right thank you have v. a good one all right bye-bye uh yeah um that's dope man i love when i, I you know I love when you get the unsolicited uh compliment it's, that's always dope because my intention is that um is is to help it's always to help so um what was i talking about mike i was like oh yeah i was saying about um so i um so to not understand three four seven four six four two eight two seven uh to not understand that you you would go through a date have no physical contact no whole hand hand holding no arm around you no kiss on the temple you know or kiss on the cheek no contact at all and then you get to the front door and you expect to go for the good night kiss we're not even talking about invite me up we're talking about just the good night kiss what i'm saying is the 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 the, the amount of space the chasm of 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 time between between no touch to something as intimate as a kiss um, I know call girls who will, they will F in the A, right? But they won't kiss you. So it, it is, kissing is a really intimate thing. And if you have not primed the pumps, if you have not, if you have not, uh, you know, put that, put that nappy dug out, put the, <laughs> the papaya in the, in the crock pot and let it and warmed it up, then you can't accept, you can't expect somebody to go from ice cold to something as intimate as a kiss um and even further from that is is sex we got another call let's go call you're on the air what's up what's, what's up dante i love you and godfrey's podcast uh i was asking for some advice i'm about to have my first child in a month so i just want to know if you got any tips and tricks for me absolutely absolutely i one of the first things i think you have to think about is when you're having your first child is you have to go what do i want this kid to be like when he's 26 years old 25 26 years old like what 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 characteristics what kind of man or woman do i want this child to be and then do the things that um that uh you know that will teach this child the things that they need. So when we talk about um, 
accountability or or consistency. So like one of the things you should, especially with your first kid, is because your first kid you love him to death. And I mean, I, I'm 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 you know I'm actually raising my first kid, but it's it's a little unfair because I have been in relationships before with with single mothers, and I helped them raise their kids. I, in fact, I helped three different women that I dated for. Um, for long term, where I helped them with their kids and cultivated their kids, it was just kind of yeah, a part that's of it. That's what I'm doing now too. Right. So I had, I had, I had, I had, I had practice doing that. So one of the things I think you have to think about is, um, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, there was a little girl I dated. My, my, I, I like this is my second marriage, right? My first marriage, the mother was, um, the mother was had a little daughter. And the daughter, um, the, to be real honest, the mother was more co- more preoccupied with herself than she was the child. In fact, I was probably more into this child than she was. Like she was one of the mothers. I'm not gonna be one of the mothers who don't who who ain't got no life. And I was like, yes, the fuck you are going to have no like this child. You have this child. We're I'm helping you with it. The child is gonna be the priority first. And then whatever time we have, which is. You know, I had no intention on us not doing things and us, uh, us not doing things personally and so on and so forth. But the child has to be first. The child didn't ask to come, and you have a responsibility to that, right? Um, yes, so anytime she would say something, um, I would ask her to have an explanation for it. So I'll give you an example. She, I don't know. I can't remember how old she was. Maybe seven, eight, nine, something like that. She goes, I hate feet, right? And I go, I go, um, really, why? And she was like, and, and I was always a pain in the ass because I made her talk and I made her express herself. And she was like, oh, God, here we go. Like, almost like, oh, I should have just shut up because now he's, he, now he's on my ass, right? And I would go, she would go, never mind, can I just go do my homework? And I was like, no, I, I need, you said you hate feet. I want to know why. And she was like, I don't know. I just, I just, I just hate him. I go, yeah, I get that. But you're not going to go nowhere until you tell me why. And she says, well, because they're sweaty. I go, okay, fair enough. She goes, I go, why else? She goes, because they stink. I go, okay. She goes, "Uh, I don't like how the pinky toe looks. I go, fine. Okay, now you can leave. Now, let me explain to you why, what I was doing. The point is, you should, can you imagine somebody 26 years old who has an opinion about something but has no idea or no explanation why they have an opinion with them? Do you understand how, how uh, what a lack of credibility somebody has when they do that, right? So yeah, exactly. say you got some 26-year-old guy, he goes, I just feel like, uh, I, I just feel like nobody should vote, you know? Uh, you can have that. You can have that opinion, right? But when I ask you why, and you go, "Well, I just don't think it matters," and I go, "Well, what makes you think it matters?" and then you don't have an explanation. Do you understand what I'm saying? As an adult, if you're an adult who has opinions and have and has no facts or no explanation why you think, do you understand how nobody's going to take you seriously? There's there's no reason to take you seriously. So the importance of teaching a child that when they say something that they're going to when they when they dec- make a declarative statement that th- that they have to have a reason and making them verbalize uh what that declarative state what that statement is and why they believe it makes a person much more I mean we all know people that just run off their mouth and say shit and they don't they have no idea you know, they have no idea why they're saying or why they think that they have no, I mean, it's just annoying, but those are also the people that we push aside and we just don't, we don't listen to. And the worst thing you want to be is an adult who nobody listens to because you're too dumb or you don't have the ability to, to express your, what your feelings are. Right. Um, here's a funny thing. I, uh, at the time when she got a little older, Oh, this was my stepdaughter. When she got a little older, uh, her 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 aunt was dating this preacher's son who was not physically abusive, but he was absolutely emotionally abusive. And he was like the preacher's son. He ran his father ran the church, and he was just a, a really crappy dude. And one day she comes to me and she goes, "You know," she goes, "You know, Pop, 
when I get married, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that I uh, date somebody who respects me, right? And I go, well, why, why, why do you say that? She goes, because my aunt is downstairs. She's cooks, she cleans, she does his clothes, and all he 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 never likes what she eats. He never appreciates anything. So at by eleven, me questioning, you know, constantly questioning her about knowing what her. What were that when she had an opinion that she needed to have, she could express to me why she thought that this was this was um uh a no no to date somebody who was unappreciative, un un uh ungrateful, selfish, and abusive, because I had constantly asked her questions, and, and I believe it would def definitely related back to the fact of why when she said. I don't like feet, and I made. I mean, you have to understand it's, that it's the same thing. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate it. And so every time you, every op, every opportunity, every interaction you have with your child, you haven't. That is an opportunity to teach your child something that they will be able to use in the future. Never waste the opportunity. Never, the, never waste the teachable moment and the, that opportunity. So, I mean, if I had to give you any advice about that, that's what I would say. Um, you're gonna miss some of them, um, and some of them are not. But if you if you're mindful of the fact that every interaction is a teachable moment, um, and and you understand how much it affects them, uh, I, I think you'll be fine. You know. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Much love to you and Godfrey and the crew. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's it's a that has always been an interesting thing to me. It's um, it's also and, and I think in my in my old age now that I have seen more, I've seen more sunsets than I'm gonna see. What I realize is I understand. You know, people say this all the time. You gotta know when to when to to to, to you gotta pick your battles. But I, I think it's not just picking your battles. I think you got if you remove the emotion. Uh, from if you can remove the emotion from which you you were accustomed to reacting to, um, you make decisions on a on a fundamentally better uh, uh, better stance or better a better point of view, and you'll find that I mean, and nobody's perfect. I mean, understand that. I mean, we we all like I've said this at least on the lives at least a hundred times. You know, two things that you will always have to do is give forgiveness and ask for forgiveness because we're all flawed and we're going to make mistakes. The problem is what you want to be able to do is make these mistakes, learn from them and make those adjustments so that you don't make them again. Live consultations, 347-464-2827. Also, don't forget to follow on Instagram, the Dante Nero. Uh, don't forget if you want one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations, DanteNero.com, click on consult. You can get to me in any, whatever crisis you got. I'll, I'll help you work it out. We got a phone call, Big Mike in the building. Call, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you from? Hey, what's going on? Um, this is Alex from Maryland. What's up, Alex? What's going on, bro? Uh, nothing much, man. Just just hanging out, watching uh, you guys, man. Uh, much love to you, man. Big respect. Uh, long you, time listening to you guys and Godfrey. Yeah, Godfrey will be here in a little while. This, I'm just doing my thing. I just was, we were just out in Baltimore at the comedy at the comedy factory. And let me just say, as a guy who grew up in Brooklyn in the 80s, Baltimore's ghetto style is superb, my friend. It is seamless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is for sure. Yeah, it was shocked to me coming from Texas. I'm a Texas guy, okay. so yeah, it was like, whoa, what's going on out here? But it's yeah, all yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually was. We were in. The, we were at the Harbor, the Harbor Hotel, and uh, and you know they was do a couple of dudes that I know was like, yeah, you don't really want to be walking around that neighborhood, right? And I was like, man, fuck that. I'm from Brooklyn. It's all good. And I start, and I walk like three, four blocks, and I was like, you know what? Let me get back to the hotel. <laughs> it was back, looking a little back, sketchy, back. but how can I help you, bro? All right. So I'm in a I'm in a kind of crossroads right now, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm 35, about to be 36 in May. Um, what day? What right day in May? What day in May? Oh, I'm a fellow tourist, brother, May okay. 19th. Nice, nice, Shout nice. Dope, dope, dope. Mine's the 13th, but go ahead. Dope, dope. So, um, was in a four-year relationship, mm -hmm. um, and I've been removed out of that for three years. So, financially, I'm just now getting my shit back in order. Got my apartment, a newer car. Everything's just kind of going on the up and up, right? Okay. 
So as I'm, you know, back on the scene dating, I'm on the apps, you know, talking to girls, you know, at Target, all that, you know. Right. Um, I'm I'm starting to notice, like, if I should, like, lay low, you know, stay on the ground, keep doing what I'm doing, or if I should kind of maybe entertain some girls or, or let them know, like, hey, you know, I'm just kind of, you know, Staying right. low, trying let me, to recover. Let me let me just say this. Um, I I this is a question that people ask a lot of times. Do you know? Do I need to get my life together? Look, let's be honest. If you hollering at somebody, how? I mean, I'm I'm trying to think of a great analogy. Okay, so um, I I was a power lifter for many years, right? Uh, right. and, um, it took me a long time to, to, to get my squat up. Right. But anytime right. somebody was impressed with the amounts of weight that I was, they would be like, yeah, man, they would, especially women say this. I don't want to get too muscular. Trust me. You're not in no shape or form. Are you going to go to planet fitness or go to some gym? Right. And then yeah. one day you have worked out one day too many and you're like, oh my God, I'm too muscular. <laughs> Like it, it just right. doesn't happen like that. What you, what you usually gonna do is find is that you're going to the gym every day and you're not seeing the progress that you want to see. What well, my point is this: um, you can work on the things that you're working on, stay on your grind, and you can still part of your life is socializing. We gotta stop looking at the our lives as a point. Okay, I want to do this because I want to get to the finish line. Let me explain something to you. The finish line is death, right? The process, yeah, okay. the pro that's, that's the finish line. It's not yeah. the amount of money. It's not the new car. It's not the house. It's not the family. What we have to understand is we have to live life in its entirety. Every day we transfer, and, and I want you to understand that every day we transfer life, a day, 24 hours of life bringing us closer to our end. OK, so okay. there's no reason. Don't get me wrong. I, 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 you, you absolutely should prioritize what your goals are. And what, but you, you have to live life, too. There's no because I, I've seen guys where they get broken up and they oh, I'm going to spend five. I'm going to spend two years doing yoga and I'm going to do it. And you you ain't you still ain't got no game. You have to when you finish yoga and you're real flexible and whatever and you got peace of mind, you still don't know. No, you ain't got no game and you don't know. You don't understand the social dynamics of this thing. You have to right, work on right. all these things. You sleep, you eat, you shit, you date, you work, you study, you make sacrifices, and you play. Life as a as a whole is is a process that, like, uh, uh, put it like this. Um, I always say love and life is like music, right? We don't not listen to a song because it's going to end. We listen to a song because of the fact that we want to enjoy the song. It's the process of going through it. It's the notes. It's the space between the notes. It's the, the quiet and the loudness, the tone, the speed, the tempo. And we have to experience all of those things to, 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 to love music. Those things affect us in a way, in a passionate way. And if we uh, if we if we live our lives the way we listen to our music, we listen to music in its entirety and all aspects of our life are just as important as everything else does that make sense oh yeah for sure for sure yeah i never looked at it like that yeah because if you if yeah, you just I thought i needed one in front of the other yeah, you, know, Doug, you gotta do it i mean look don't get me wrong something has to be more important if you homeless you, your first thing to do is to get not be homeless. If you hungry, you, you, you but I, Doug, I, we've all seen homeless dudes with a girlfriend. We've seen homeless dudes with a girlfriend and a dog, right? Right. <laughs> and, and I, man, I love dogs. I'm a big, I love a candy course. So my, 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 shout out to my boy, my, my cousin Ty. Um, out in Long Island, he, you know, he breeds candy corsos. I love dogs, but I refuse to get a dog because I just don't. I, I, I'm I'm so worried about being a good dog owner that I don't have the time. Plus, me and Godfrey are traveling, and I'm traveling. We're doing. I just don't have. I don't think it's fair. But my point, my point of that is, I've seen homeless dudes with a girlfriend and a dog. 
So whole family, whole <laughs> whole ass homeless family. You know what I mean? So and and not always just because of tragedy, because this is you know a homeless dude who just like yo, this is how I want to live. So I, I think you have to you have to prioritize things and make things what's more important. You got to prioritize what, but you got to live your life because the finish line is death. Dog. That's the end. And if you haven't done the things that you need to do, like uh, one thing I can say about myself, if I if I die on air right now, I, I I'm I I wrote it till the wheels fell off. You feel me? And anybody that knows me yeah. would say, God damn, you know. It was so tragic. It happened so so suddenly. But everybody that knows me would go like, yeah, but God damn, he, he did it while he did the damn thing while he was doing it. And I think that's how you, you got to live, you know? Okay. Yeah, and everything else will fall into play. I got you. Yeah, okay. but, but still have to prioritize what's important, and we know what's important. If you hungry and you ain't got no food in the fridge, I mean, come on. You know what I mean? And it, you, I don't right. know. I don't know how much game you're gonna have with with, you, <laughs> with hunger pains. So that's what it is, man. Thank you so much for calling, bro. I appreciate you. I, I appreciate y'all, man. Much love. All right. Um. Yeah. It's a. Uh, um. I want to get back to this other thing. Phone call three four seven four six four two eight two seven. What I want to get to is the fact that you got to understand text messaging is not the same as speaking. Just like. Speaking is not the same as physically being in somebody's presence. There's an, a level, what you're trying to do in any situation where you're, 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 you're trying to be, the ultimate goal is for you to be with somebody. To, even if it's just sex at the time, the goal is to that, and so you should be- The goal is never a text message. It's not, the goal is not the text message. Look, the text message, and I've I've said this way. I've had, I've, especially if, if I'm fucking around with some young girl, I don't really like getting on the phone. I we can't talk then. Like we, we can't do this. What do you mean? I go look. I don't have a problem with text, but I'm not going. I'm not going to be texting. I'm not going to do no paragraph and this the, of of texting you back and forth. Um, first of all, here's the thing. Especially when you're in a situation where you the 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 relationship is uh is new, right? Women keep you at arm's length by text messaging. And so a lot of women who want to be validated, who just like the attention of men, they're on these apps to slide, check on my DM, you DM me this, that, and the other, you hit them back and forth. The ultimate goal is to speak to them on the phone. And once you speak to them on the phone, the next goal is to get them out on a date and get them face to face so that you can see if you can fit. That doesn't mean that this is the right person, but if that is the goal, if, if if real physical physical and social interaction is the place, you gotta take it off the internet. You gotta get to the point where you're face to face. If it's a cup of coffee, if it's a meal, we got a call. Let's go. Call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you from? Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I yeah, can hear. You. I can hear. You. What's your name, bro? Uh, Jamal. What's going on, Jamal? What's going on? How can I help you, bro? Okay, so I have a friend. You're breaking um, up on us? Can we have this friend group, and we're all South Asian. And we met um, around the time we were 10. We've been best friends since. And ever since we were kids, like 11, 12, we always had the idea of, like, yo, just the, all five of us will, like, go to Tokyo together. You know what I mean? Like, some people want to go to the Super Bowl with their friends. Like, this is kind of, like, our thing, right? Okay. And um, we're all 26, 27 now. And, you know, last year I was the last guy to get, like, a good-paying job. So in 2023, we're kind of like, you let's do it this year. But um, one of our friends moved, so financially we're like, all right, like, 2024 is a set date. Now I have this one friend, um, we'll just call him D. Um, he's been married three years. And throughout our entire lives, he's been, like, 10 out of 10 excited. Like, this is the one thing he wanted to do. So now stop. Let plan. me let me let me let me finish this for you. He's married now, and now he can't. He don't want to go because his lady don't want him to go. Is that what's going on? Yeah. How did I yeah, know? <laughs> so basically, in November, like as early as December, he was like, "Yes," uh -huh. and then we linked up for the Chiefs Bills Super uh, game, the wild card game. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, "Yo," so like you know, let's finalize a date in May. Right. And he was like, "Um, oh, the thing is, is like I told my girl." And uh, she was kind of like, well, why would you go to Tokyo with them? Why wouldn't you go with me? So he's like, so I don't think I can do it. 
And, like, we were at a party, so I couldn't really say anything. And then I kind of hit him later on text, and I was like, yo, like, so do you really want to go? And he was like, yeah, but I don't think I can. And oh, okay. he just hit me up, like, two days later. And All right, so what, like, what is your question? What's your question? I realize that, like, he's not going to go. It's kind of a lost cause. But, right. like, there have been things uh, in his marriage um, that, like, kind of indicate that, like, he's kind of like a guy with no civil rights. And so it's just like, how do I like <laughs> approach? Like, I don't know how else to say it, man. But it's like, how do I kind of like? So his his wife like, is hey. his wife is sicking dogs on him and and hosing him down. So he, he, dude, there was a time where basically we were out. Um, we were at a friend's house, and it was nice. It was the summer, so we just went for a walk. And it was getting late, so he was like, "Hey, uh, let's walk back to the crib. How far is it?" And we we're like, "Oh, it's an 18 minute walk." And he starts getting really nervous. And he was like, oh, I told my wife I'd be back by, like, X, Y, Z. All right, here's a, like, here's yeah, a, yeah, we'll leave now. I got and you. Then, like, First of yeah, all, okay, you don't that. even have to finish because I've, I've, I've seen this over and over again. First thing yeah. you need to do is uh, is you need to get him a consultation. DanteNRL.com, click on consult. He has uh, he, He's in a situation where he's a hostage, right? Yeah. And what do we say in America? We don't. We don't negotiate with negotiate hostages, with terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> with terrorists. And uh, this, the bottom line with any of this is that he's going to be a lost cause until he's not a lost cause. What what's going on with him is he is just happy to have somebody, and he's 100%. willing he's willing to he's willing to compromise his happiness and everything that he loves for this woman. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, what's compromising a trip since he was tw a child? You know yeah, what I mean? like, and and the, because he doesn't want her. So what what he's literally literally saying is, my happiness it means nothing as long as I could keep her from bitching at me. So mm -hmm. I've talked about this a hundred times. The the word compromise, uh, the the definition for compromise is that both parties neither party gets what they want. That means I don't get all of what I want, and you don't get a. And marriage has to be a compromise. It can't be just. Uh, it can't be. Look, I'll do what you want, so you can shut the fuck up. Like that's not a compromise. Um, yeah. and understand something. She will not respect him. She will yeah. continue to push the boundaries back until finally she either gets to the point where she doesn't respect him enough to be faithful. She'll step out on him. Or she will just she will get it will get to the point where he's so miserable that he won't even be able to he won't be able to to, to talk to he might not even be able to be friends with you after a while because yeah. she's gonna take anything that he does or anything that cultivates him and his happiness as a, as an offense to her and that has to do with number one that she's insecure and she's trying to control everything around it and that could be a multiple reason i won't get into that because she's not paying for a consultation but the point is what i will say that you need to do what i just said to you you need to tell him that yeah you you so need do you, you need to go ahead so, sorry to interrupt now you go uh you need to tell him that right so that at least when what i'm saying is happens um you will have you'll be able to say we spoke about this and I not to tell him I told you so that you can rub it in his face so that at of least course. that you can when you explain it to him look if you don't respect yourself she's not going to respect you if you don't put yourself first she won't um mm -hmm. you know anything you do for a woman more than 3 times is no longer a, it's no longer a favor it's an obligation people take advantage of the people who 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 they can take an advan advantage of so at least if you get in on the on the ground floor of this when you say, Listen, I I I I just want to talk to you. I want you to know we had planned this. This is I understand that this you with you, you you with your wife or your girl or whatever and I said but you still get to have happiness and you cannot and if you do that, ultimately what she will do is she will lose respect for you and she's gonna go blow she's gonna suck somebody else's dick. That's gonna happen. So yeah. Now he he may get offended by it, but you got at least if you get the truth out. So when it does happen, you'll be the first person that he calls when it happens, and he's brokenhearted because she stepped out on him, or when he's so miserable that he can't even leave the house without her or whatever because he never set the boundaries in the first place. And then when he does call you and you go, "Man, you told me it was gonna happen, and it did." At least then you could help yeah. him. You could help rebuild him back to his former self, or at least to maybe somebody who he wasn't in the first place. You know, because this is definitely a a, 
a situation where he's so insecure, he's just happy to have this woman, and he's willing to he's willing to sacrifice any of his anything and everything just to maintain her, even if he's unhappy. So it's a it's a, a weird process. Uh, you, is it, can I ask one more quick question? Or sure, real quick. Um, so I was thinking of approaching it as like being like, hey, um, how come like when you told her about this trip, the principal like, why wasn't the principal like she was happy for you? Like, why wasn't it? Let me. Uh, you're not. Like, her she's meeting? not listening to you. And what you're trying to do is strategize yeah. a situation that he's not even willing to stand up for himself. Okay, yeah. So all you can tell him is you can predict, listen, here's this is what's going to happen. You continue you don't have to you don't have to put my little flavor in there, but she's going to be blowing somebody. Yeah. And, but you can say, look, if she doesn't respect you, eventually she's going to fall out of love with you and this relationship mm-hmm. is going to end. And so the relationship is dependent upon her respecting you. And if you don't create boundaries and ma- and and set those boundaries and hold to those boundaries, no woman is going to respect a weak man who's willing to do everything that she wants him to do yeah right. thank you very much man i really appreciate you're welcome it. bro appreciate you take care that's it's that's even dope mike because it's like he's you know he's worried about his friend he sees the writing on the wall i mean i mean we've all been in situations where we we you know our boy or our girl is in a ridiculous relationship with the other uh, saving silverman do you yeah. remember that movie oh yes where yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where we, you, where you just could see it, and because this person is just so happy to be in a relationship that they, they not don't, even happy, happy, just happy to be in the relationship. Just, just not I even got, a happy person. I got somebody, somebody who's abusive yeah. and somebody's disrespectful, and you, you should not be in a relationship um, with somebody who doesn't want you to be happy and who doesn't acknowledge the things that make you happy. I mean, like I said, there's always compromise in relationships, but if somebody doesn't genuinely want you to be happy, then you don't need to be with them. I've, I've said this a hundred times, and this is, this is you know, like men in general, I mean, and this is a broad-based kind of thing, but men, men when they dick suck, they want to fuck. Women, a, a, a lot of women don't like that, or they don't, or they're not ready to get it, go get it all the time, and usually not, especially when they're young, it becomes a situation. So a lot of women will want, they will want the wedding but don't want the ma- the marriage. So they will be in a situation where, hey, I want to get married. I want the white dress. I want the flowers. This is what I want. I want my, my bridesmaids. This, I want eight bridesmaids. Like, but you got to understand, when you, when you get married, what you're, you're, a woman is asking you for fidelity. She's asking you not to sleep with anybody else for the rest of your life. Now, that is understood. At least you're supposed to understand that. I've said this to girls that I'm dating. Look, you ain't sucking my dick enough. If you're not sucking my dick enough, I'm going to go get somebody to do it. I, I want you to understand that I am not going to go the rest of my life unhappy without my dick suck. Which it's, it's like having a job almost. You tell it, your employer, like, if you're not paying me X, I will go somewhere that pays me Y. Ex- like, exactly. And and I think when you when you get women who will be like, when are we going to get married? Where's the ring? I want this ring. When I'm, and then what you should say, well, you understand that part of this ring is that you're going to be blowing me for the rest of your life. You you do understand. I'm going to be, And I'm not saying that a woman can't be she can't have a period she can't feel bad she can't i'm i'm not talking about being re- unreasonable what i'm saying is if you want fidelity you should a woman should understand what fidelity means is that you are going to take care of my sexual needs and vice versa if you're a guy who's asexual and don't want to knock it down don't expect her to be healthy if you're not knocking it down T- to the same token it need you cannot make the assumption that they both that you both understand that this is something that needs to be said it needs to come out of your mouth where you go listen understand something if you stop fucking me i'm going to talk to you about it once the second time i talk to you about it i'm not going to talk about it. i'm going i'm i'm going to get i'm going to get hit off I'm on the job, hon. That, that's it. So we're not going to do this a hundred times. We're not going to talk about it. You said, but I don't know. Blah, blah. Then just don't get married. Yeah, let's go. We got a phone call. Let's go. Hey, Cole, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you from? Alex from Michigan. What's up, Dante? What's up, Al? What's going on, bro? How can I help you? 
Hey, not too much. I'm in an interesting predicament, and I could definitely use your advice. So sure. I've been talking to this girl since about August, and uh, I kind of ghosted her about a month ago because she flaked on my birthday after promising me a bunch of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We were never formally dating or anything. We actually worked together. Mm -hmm. And uh, she actually spun the block on me yesterday. It's been like exactly a month, and mm -hmm. she wants to hang out this weekend, and I wanted your advice to see what I should do. Okay, what would what would he uh, what would what was the expectations about um, the relationship or her her you know what was your understanding with her? Um, it was more of just a friendship. Like I said, we actually worked together, um, and that's kind of how we started spending time together. I did tell her that I liked her, and she pushed that message to me too. And then she kind of said she did the whole typical well i'm not ready for a relationship thing but then her actions didn't meet her words you know she was over at my house every day and like we talked seven days a week i tour in the concert industry and she mm -hmm. would call me every day you know kept in touch it was kind of like the beginning of a relationship without it actually being a relationship you know what i mean okay but you never had that conversation with her about a relationship no, no, we did. We did. And she said, that's what she said. Well, you know, I'm not really ready for a relationship. Okay. And there's a lot of factors that went into that. You know, she had a kid that's about to graduate high school and she never got to do the single girl thing. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm not a naive guy. I'm pretty experienced, but um, this is somebody that, you know, because we did spend so much time together, we developed a real, you know, friendship and closeness. And I really do like her a lot. Now, but now I, have to time, I, have, I have to ask yeah, you, yeah. You, did have, you did have sex with her, yes? Not sex, physical contact. Whoa. And that's kind of the thing too. No, and see, here's the thing. I know, man. That's why I'm calling in because I, I get it. Like, but I, sometimes you need to hear somebody else say it and talk you through it. Because okay, let me let me this say this for the rest. Let me say, and this was the theme of the early part of the show. I don't know if you caught the live early. What I said is no. guys are in this situation where they are text messaging and talking and whatever, whatever. If you haven't, and, and how long did y'all, like, not date? Um, since September. And so September all so, the way. So and, just to clarify, so just to clarify though, um, because this is probably important, like about three of those months I've been gone on concert tours around the country. So I've seen her here and there and still kept in contact. How many times, how many but, times, um, how many times have you seen her? Physically, oh, like, physically been with her. Oh, tons of times. I mean, she, if I'm home. Which has been the other half of that time. She okay, was if somebody's not, place, you like got five. you got no stake in this if you haven't slept with her, and if she didn't, right, sleep, if exactly. she didn't, if she didn't sleep with you, she don't want to sleep with you. Because here's right. the thing, like, here's 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 the thing. Say for instance, some chick goes to the Drake concert, right? And Drake says, "Yo, mm -hmm. why don't you call at me? Why don't you come to the hotel? Here's the thing, my man is gonna." Ba 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 ba. When she goes to Drake's hotel, do you think that they're gonna be playing Scrabble or they're gonna be smashing? Oh, of course. Of okay. Course. So my point is, and that's the thing, man. Is go ahead. Go. Women do what they want to do, and if they're not doing it, what they want to, if then if they're gonna do what they want to do, if they're not doing, you have to assume that they don't want to. Now, you are the one who put up with this nonsense. For fucking September, October, November, December, January, February, six, seven months. And then on, when I, now it's funny because here's the thing. When somebody said, you know, we were seeing each other, but it wasn't really such and such. And it was kind of, we were talking, but she didn't want a relationship. I, I was really hesitant because you also said to me, you're not, you know, you, you, you're, you're experienced and this, that. How the fuck could you say you're experienced and you with some chick for six months and never smashed? So that, that's a that's a really fair question, man. And I, I kind of in between, I would say inexperience and experience because I still I was on tour. I still had other women at that time, and I guess okay, that's why stop. I didn't here's really my prioritize here's it, my yeah. thing. So, but you were smashing. You you were having sex with other people. Very actively. Okay. So here here's here's my point. You, you got to deal with each situation. You know, like it's just like it's like spades. You got to play every hand. You know what I mean? You can't. You know what I'm saying? If you you got to play the hand for what it is, right? You can't you can't run a Boston and you only got two books. You know you feel what I'm saying? It's we're literally in a situation where you have whatever your 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 uh your escapades with other people have 
absolutely nothing to do with this. If you got a, if you got this chick and you were literally looking to move this into a relationship and she made no effort to do so, then you got to assume that she doesn't want to. Now, your question is she's she swang back and she wants to holler at you. Right. You I, I, mm. I don't think it's unreasonable to say what your expectations are. Like, what do you, what do you want to hang out for what? Well, so so here's the thing now, like in this month that has passed, I've been completely soured and I have no interest in a relationship with her at all. So that's what I'm kind of asking is like also like what should I? She didn't ask you for a relationship. She didn't ask you. Right. So no, your your sure. assumption saying, like now she didn't want it before and she didn't ask you now. So why is your assumption that she wants a relationship? What is she what has she said to you that makes you think? She wants a relationship. No, I think you, you might have mis, uh, misheard me. I was saying I have no interest in what I used to have. With I her. understand that. What I'm saying is neither yeah. does she. Oh, my, yeah, for sure. My question is what oh. makes you think that she wants a relationship with you? I don't think she does. Well, I'm just wondering why she's hitting me up, like what she's trying to do. Ask her. How about ask her? For sure. I mean, why, yeah. why, why, why? I don't know why, <laughs> but I know she. Uh, no, she, I. I, this, yeah, but, I guess I'm just trying to get ahead of it. So yeah, I you can't get ahead of it. Properly. This is the problem. This is the problem. If I'm dating somebody for five dates, right, and I feel like the vibe is there, like the sexual vibe is there, and I go to I go to push up, and she stops me, I'm gonna be like, Yo, what's what's up? You don't know, you not feeling me? What's the deal? I'm gonna ask. I'm going to verbally ask. I'm not going to be in this situation. Well, I'm just not really that comfortable. Okay, cool. But um, I I just I felt like like we were on the same page. But she's going to have to give me an explanation. Why or why not, right? Now, if she says, I, I just want to feel comfortable, blah, 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 blah. I, like, I've, I, there's something I used to say. I used to say this even when Patrice was around. I go, I don't mind not fucking. I mind can't fucking. Like what I mean by that is I don't <laughs> mind somebody going, hey, listen, I'm I'm just not feeling it. Just I'm just not there with you yet, right? But I do have a problem with you going. Well, I don't date. I don't have sex on the first date, or I don't have sex on the third date, or I don't. I don't be. I, I don't look. You're gonna deal with me as an individual, and if you're not gonna deal with me as an individual, so clearly you're saying that you getting laid anyway. Like you have, you, I mean, you, you literally have no stake in this at all. You have somebody who you were dug her at one time. She didn't want to rock. She swings back again. You don't know why are you giving this such a breath of, 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 of distance? Go, yo, she, come, somebody, call, yo, what's up? You call me up and swing back. Hey, what's up? And then did she say, I want to hang out to you? Yeah. She asked me to hang out this Saturday. And you didn't go for what? Why wouldn't you go oh, for what? So, well, no, so, so I'll, I'll answer that. So I, I had a show, but it's, I'm only going to be busy on Friday now. So you're giving me these um, details. My yeah. question is this for what, why do you want to hang out with me? I was pushing up before you wasn't really feeling it. What do you want? Why should I waste my time on you now? What's in it for me? I don't think that's unreasonable, right? So you go, why, why, no, why I, you want to, why you want to hang out? Can, can I ask when you do hang out? What do you? Do? I'm not saying fucking's all you could do, but like, do you like take her to shows, take her backstage, and like she likes that part of it, or? Um, yeah, so that uh, we we work in the same industry, so we we travel all over the country together. None of that matters. Why summer. does You're she? Right, for sure. <laughs> you you like this is first of all you you got to understand that. It, I don't know if you're listening to this, and if when you get a chance and I post the live, you got to listen to this yourself. You got to listen yeah. yourself. You got a chick that you've been, you've been, you've been back and forth six months, back and forth, whatever. You tried to get her life, she turned you down. She whatever. She you y'all ended up not talking or whatever. She swings back and she goes, "Hey, let's hang out." Why would you not go? What for? She, and, and if her response is, well, you know, I just wanted to see you. Yeah, but I'm not trying to fuck with you. Get like, the dog. Like, the fuck out of here. What do you mean you don't want to? 
What you trying to? I, mean, sure. I, I said I was busy when when she asked me. I guess that's why I didn't ask that question. Stop but, lying! But you're lying! I mean, should, you're not busy. I never, you're no, not. I, you're understand. Uh, I've said this, Ace. Authenticity, credibility, and empathy. I don't, I don't mean to go at you hard, but it's it. What it, what you got to understand is it's this goes to my frustration about this. Practice the principles, Ace. Were you busy? No. Why did you say no? Because you didn't want to be bothered. Go, yeah, I'm not really into this. Why lie about it? For somebody who rejected you and had didn't give a fuck about what you wanted or what you didn't want. So why tell her you were busy? You there? I was. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. I was. I, I had a show that you're was be, now, you're, you're, You are shitting in my mouth now. You were not busy. Not. If she was like, yo, I'm trying to fuck. What's up? You go, well, I'm busy right now, but I'll be finished at, at 8. You want me to pick you up then, right? You would do that, right? I see what you're saying. I see what so you're what saying. I'm saying is you bullshit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not lying, though. I, listen, I, I get no, what you mean, you're not. I get what you listen, mean. I don't mean when I say that. I don't mean that you're being, you're, you're, I, I don't mean that you're, you're trying to lie, but you are lying. You, you would make. I see what you mean. What I'm talking, when I talk about Ace, when I talk about authenticity, it's extreme authenticity, especially somebody who I've been chasing and pining after for six months, and then she cuts me off and she swings back. Yo, what's up? Yo, what you do? What am I doing? Why are you on my phone? You, we, I had a birthday. You ghosted me. It's like, what, what? Why is you? Why are you not holding her accountable? And I'm gonna tell you why you're not. I already know why. Because you're hopeful that this will work out in a way. Because you're not being honest. But you may not want a relationship, but you still want to hang out with this girl. And you're a, you're you're still honestly you're a little weird by the fact that she 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 blew you off, and now you're like, well, you know, what are my opportunities? So you're tiptoeing around this. Like, because it's an opportunity for you to still smash. And even when you, but you're not being honest with yourself. That's what, I mean, ultimately, what is, you, what is it you want to do? You want to smash? Well, that's part of the reason I'm calling. I, I hadn't thought about it up until yes, yesterday. Yes, the fuck you did. When, so she, when it, she called it, you, you thought about whether or not you wanted to smash. You know whether you well, want to smash. Right, at that, in, in that moment then. But like I said, she, like the way she treated me was like. I need you to be honest. Off. Understand something. I need you to be honest with uh, me because I need you to be honest with you. Right? Mm. I'm going to ask you a question. I just need you to give me an honest. Did you want to smash? Do I or did I? It don't matter. Stop shuffling around this. I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. So I did. Did, you, you, why are you making me work through this? Because I already know the I, answer. I, 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 I'm just trying to give you the details. No, 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 no. You're not trying to give me the details. You're being elusive because you're not being honest with yourself. Uh, now, did you want to smash and have a relationship? Maybe not. Maybe you said, well, I maybe you'll smash and see where it goes. There could be any number of variations. But when she called you, the reason why you're entertaining this, the reason why you're even wasting time talking to me about this is because you wanted something. If that was a That's fling... True, yeah. A smash. So when I asked you, did you want to smash? Well, I, 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 come on, man. Who are you talking to? You 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 got to understand that I, I do this. This is what I do. If you are entertaining this, you wanted something out of it. I'm assuming you didn't want to just play Scrabble, right? No. That, that, so you wanted to smash. And you want me to tell you whether or not this is legitimate or if you're playing yourself when you already know you're playing yourself. First of all, somebody that ghosted you, made all kinds of birthday promises, this, that, and the other, and ghosted you, go like, yo, you call me up, I'm going to be like, yo, what's up? What the fuck you want? Why, 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 the fuck, why are you on the end of my phone? Oh, why you got to be so, because, uh, yo, last time I spoke to you, you said we was going to do this on my birthday, and then you, you just you flaked on me. Told me you didn't want to, so why are you on my phone now? She's going to have to say something to me. Well, I thought about it. I really missed what we had, such and such and such. So, I'm, so uh, are we fucking or not? Like, I don't, I don't see why that is uh, unreasonable to ask. Because she's surely going to ask you 
for what you want. And what you, and this is what I talk about. 99% of the dudes that I talk to that listen to this, do go listen to this, any one of these really, they're liars. Now, when I say that, I don't mean that in a malicious way that you're trying to lie to 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 take advantage of someone or steal money. But I'm saying there's three. I've said this before. There's three reasons why people lie. Number one, because they're they're being deceptive and they want to take advantage of. Them. Number two, because they don't want to they don't want to end up in some kind of confrontation and they want to deal with the conflict. Number three, because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. They're all three different types of lies, but they're all lying. And when we talk about your authenticity, if you are if you are exercising in any one of those categories, you are lying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely do. That's a perspective I did not see in myself. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. So when I ask you a question, the question is a real easy question. Did you want to smile? Well, did I, didn't I, do I, do I want now? I mean, before you asked me, to 20 well, Come on, man. Like, like we... You're you're talking to me because you want you want me to tell you the truth. Because if you if you don't want me to Absolutely. tell you the truth, you listen to the wrong podcast. Because <laughs> I'm not. No, I definitely do. I definitely. Do. Because I'm going to tell you something. I, I, as much as I love the fans and I love helping people, I don't care about you enough to lie to you. I would. I don't care about nobody that listens to this. Listen to me or don't listen to me. Fuck off. Whatever. I will not. I will not uh, desecrate my credibility for anybody that listens to me, because the minute I'm not trustworthy and truthful to you, you can't trust me. You can't trust my advice. So if I don't practice this, the the shit that I'm telling you to practice, you understand how I lose my credibility. And the minute I lose my credibility by not calling you out on your bullshit, right, then I am, I am less of the person that I am. Nobody that I know, and Mike, Mike, big Mike, you in the building. Mike, when I say something, do, and you know people that I know, people that I know, when I say something, does anybody question that I'm telling the truth? Have you ever I haven't seen anyone, and personally, me, when I, I, never once, never. Told, I've, I've never had a reason to. There's never been a time you told me something, and then later on, I've heard something. I'm like, what the fuck was not they talking about? Right, like, never, never, yeah. never. And and you know, a mass majority of my friends and my acquaintances. Yes, I've spent intimate time with everyone. Like, yeah. And if I said to somebody, when I see that dude, he gonna catch hands. You may have not seen it, but. Would you ever think... I wouldn't roll my eyes like, oh, here goes Dante again. I'd be like, oh, shit, someone's dying. Somebody's, yeah, yeah. somebody's getting this smoke. So what I'm, what I'm saying to you is the, if you're 85% trustworthy, Al, that is the definition of being a liar. 85% hmm. trustworthy is being untrust. That's the definition of being untrustworthy. Does that make sense? It definitely does, man. So here's the thing. She calls um, you up. The first thing you should have said, I'm, oh, what's up? You ain't got to be like, well, I, 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 you know, I don't expect you to be me because I'd be like, yo, why the fuck are you on the end of my phone? All right? First of all, you picked up, which says enough. I don't even know if I'd have picked up the phone. <laughs> but, yeah, okay. I almost did, man, but here, here you go again. That's bullshit. You did not hesitate. You saw the number, and you were you were feeling yourself because she called. Because this is another opportunity. It's another shot at something, the one that got away. That I know that's what you feel, whether you admit to that or not. I need you to be honest. You picked up the phone because you had something in mind. You may have not defined that, but you know you had something in mind. Is that fair enough or no? Yeah, I mean, I have to say yes. I, like you said, I did answer the phone. So okay, so and then she's Some on of the, the stuff phone. you're saying. I guess I didn't. I never thought of it in the way that you were conveying it. To me, I, you know I get I mean? that it because like, you're accustomed to lying. You're accustomed yeah. to lying to yourself. You're accustomed to lying to not end up in confrontation. You're accustomed to not lying so that you don't end up hurting somebody's feeling. This is what I'm telling you. They, none, all lies are the same. They have the same value. All it means is that you're untrustworthy. So what I'm saying, when somebody calls me and I pick up the phone, I've already 
incriminated myself because I picked up the phone. At first, just picking up the phone. Because if I don't give a fuck about you, I'm not going to pick up the phone, right? Then if you, second, I go, hey, what's up? Why are you on my phone? Meaning I care about you enough to hear you out, right? Well, I just want I mean, you want to hang out. Why? Why would I? Why would I want to hang out? Well, why are you being so? You you being and and when you when, and you know and what women will do sometimes is they will be like, oh, you acting real emotional. You acting real. Yeah, bitch. Whatever. Like I'm good, and then I'll hang up the phone because if you're not gonna have a real conversation, and then you're gonna gaslight me about, I hate gaslight. You lying to me about what your intention is. You calling me for some reason. I want to know why. I'm not mad. Because I don't want to fuck with you, but I also have, am making a clear line in the sand about what I feel it, I'm willing to put up with. And I'm not going through the bullshit that I just went through with you. Six months of, of taking you out, hanging out with you, spending time with you, this, that, and the other. You know what my intentions are. And then you, 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 then you blowing me off and you go, like, come on, just get out, the fuck out of here. You're not that important. And the reason why you're giving her the time of the day is because you think she's more, she's impo- more important than she is. And she's shown you already mm-hmm. what her value is. And you're not even going to hold her accountable. Why? Because deep down, whatever you really have in mind, you're hoping that it ends up the way that fairy tale is in your head. And the only way you're going to know if that fairy tale can come out is you're going to have to confront her. So the first thing is like, you should call her up today. Yo, you said you wanted to hang out. What's up? What, yo, what's your plan? What, what's up? What you trying to do? You fucking? You not fucking? Especially if you're debting it anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah. go for it. Throw it out there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do. You know me, Mike. I don't never bite my tongue. I had a I had a Christian girl I was talking to, and she was like, "Well, I'm not, not really relig- religious. I'm 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 more spiritual." I go, "Yo, I don't know what the fuck that means. You have to explain to me. Does that mean religion without?" And I know that I could blow, smashing because of the fact that I'm confronting her. But I, I look, truth is more important. And what you don't really realize is nine times out of ten. When you are confrontational, when you are honest, uh, not, not confrontational for the sake of being confrontational, but when you're, when you're confronting somebody with the truth, nine times out of, one, uh, out of ten, what you're exhibiting to the woman that you're dealing with is, oh, this motherfucker, he, he ain't with the bullshit. I like this. Yeah. I mean, if there's any women, listen, call in. Please call in. Who the fuck wants some mealy motherfucker who's trying to say something but not trying to say? Nobody don't want you to be, no chick wants you to wait six months to fuck. They respect you more if you go, oh, you're not fucking, you know. I mean, and I'm, and I'm going to be honest, within reason, because there's a definitely a situation where she might not be comfortable, but you're going to have to talk to me about your level of comfortable. We, we are, there's, people are three-dimensional. They're physical. They're intellectual and they're emotional. All of, all three of those aspects are equally as important. That means fucking you, talking to you, having intellectual stimulating conversations, and and uh, uh, intimacy, intellectual stimulation, and physical stimulation. They're all part of the one. You can't have a relationship without one or the other. And when you find people that are willing to do that, it's because you're afraid. And understand, Al, it's, it's okay. I want you to understand, I'm coming at you hard because, because what you said to me was, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty experienced. Doug, come on. This is a situation where you have not, you have had no, did y'all at least make out? A few times, yeah. All right, so she baited the hook and she caught the big fish. And then when she decided to, she threw you back in the water and was like, yeah, hey, whatever, I'm going to go through. And then because you were so... And no disrespect, but because you tra- you ha- you treated this situation so pussy, she's like, ah, let me see what this motherfucker doing. So your your job is to let her know, yo, why are you on my phone? Why why are you coming at me so I'm not hostile? But I just to be honest, you were really disrespectful. You knew I liked you, you know I was into you. You said whatever, whatever, um, and then you just ghosted me. You you you. Made all these promises and you and you and nothing you said meant anything, so so I'm not willing to go down that road again, 
where you where you uh you know you catfish me about what's gonna happen and sell me dreams and then I wanna know what's up. So now it's gotta come out of your mouth. So if you're gonna be a liar, you're gonna have to verbally lie to me and then be a liar, which then makes it clear for me because now I know I'm not supposed to fuck with you at all. Cause you're a liar. You're dishonest. Make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like I said, that's why I called. I knew you would uh, tell me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't mean to go hard on you, but I think it's necessary for me to go hard on you when you, you're being dishonest with me. And I understand that you don't think you are, but what I'm saying is when I ask you a question, I know I, nine times out of ten, just so everybody who's listening, anybody calls in, when I ask you a question, I already know the fucking answer. Nine times out of ten, I know. Because all the pieces fit in. If if it was if it was some crazy chick that looked like death sucking on a lifesaver, she was a horrible chick, badly burned, right? She was in a fire somewhere, and her, and she was in a fire, and her and her vagina had to get fucking removed, and she looked like a burn victim, right? And she called you, and you knew that she was like trying to get with you, and you didn't want you wouldn't pick up the phone. <laughs> Here's my question. Is she bad? Very. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we're being honest. <laughs> so she's a fucking, she's a dime piece, and she got you flustered, and you want to smash. Al, that's okay. It's okay that you want that, and it's okay for her not to want that. But you don't put up with, you putting up with the, with the bullshit doesn't get you any closer to your goal. What gets you to the, your goal is you being an authentic, credible, empathetic dude who thinks that who puts himself first because if you don't, they won't. You understand? And if somebody doesn't respect that, like, first of all, look, you sound like a really good do- dude. You don't sound like a shady dude or nothing. But let me, uh, but how many dudes operate on that level of honesty? I'm already, I'm at, again, I'm asking a question. I mean, I would be surprised if you have a friend, one friend that operates on that on on those principles, on ace principles. Maybe you have one, but I know you I don't I know you don't have many, right? No, I was gonna say pretty much all my friends are just like you. They're I, older than me and they have the same view and yeah, I I, I, I doubt that either. because I'm I mean I yes maybe yeah. to a certain extent but I'm I'm a I'm a different breed of dude and that's because of my experience but my point being this um it, it what I'm saying is the if if you know basic math supply and demand anything that is a scarcity of has a, a higher value correct mm-hmm. so yes. the less available something is the more valuable it is right So if we say that more often than not, people are dishonest, then honesty as a commodity is something that's much more valuable and valuable because it's so rare that you find men who are willing to be brutally honest. Credibility is also something. A guy who says his word and keeps his word also. Now, somebody who is honest and credible and still has empathetic. Do you understand what kind of unicorn that is for a woman to catch? But when you espouse yeah. those qualities, you become the unicorn. Does that make sense? It does. I have never thought of it in that exact type of way before. Now, don't get me wrong. You got to DanteNever.com, click on consult. You need a one-on-one consultation because you still have to know how to market your value. There's a marketing to it, and that happens within your approach and your sub in the subtext of what you say and what you don't, body language and all those things. And I teach all of that too. But the point is, you gotta first expound that. That's why I talk about ace. That's why I talk about authenticity, credibility, and empathy because there's nothing more valuable than that. I may or may not have have hustled been in in street pharmaceuticals at one time but here's what let's let me give you a, an example if i go to the if i go up to washington heights to the dominican it's to get a pick a package right and i go there with try and I, I go there with my money and i go to get a bird right or i go to get a whatever whatever quantity i'm gonna get and i go there and they put a gun to my head and steal my money right 
those even in in the criminality of that, right? They cannot do business. Business, there has to be a level of integrity in the fact that I want to purchase your product and you will take my money and give me the product. If we don't have any, there's no standard on how we operate, how can I, we can't do business. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's an even in the immorality of, 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 of crime, there's still a level of integrity and credibility and authenticity, even in, even when it comes to that. You feel me? Yeah, no, it makes total sense. So I wouldn't even call it. Here's what I would tell you to do. Don't call it. If she calls you back and you and you say, don't say I'm busy. Say, yo, I, I don't like I heard like what why? Why why you want why you want to talk to me? And she's gonna have to explain. And don't let her gas like, oh, you acting emotional. Nah, I'm just not willing to waste my time. And and the way you treated me last time, I don't think that you're worth my time. So if you think I'm, if you think you are, you're gonna have to show me how. Do you understand how a woman can't can't disrespect you when you say that? That's a fact. Be honest, bro. You don't have to be you don't have to be mean. But you should be honest. Why is your why is your time not worth anything to you? And the simple fact that she um that that she wants to give you some inten- intention is more important than your being. And I get it. She's bad, right? But let me say this: What happens is if she, is she a dime? She's straight dime or what? Straight, yeah. Uh, let's do it. Let's do Everybody one. To, uh, let's do it one to thirty. What is she on, on a scale of one to on thirty? Third, uh, um, I would say strong twenty. Twenty. Okay, so she's a badass regular bitch. All right. <laughs> so mm-hmm. my point is, <laughs> <laughs> so like twenty is a badass regular bitch. Twenty one is an ugly ass fine bitch. <laughs> and okay. and twenty nine, right. thirty is a badass bad bitch. <laughs> Right. So what I'm saying is what I'm saying is no matter how bad she is. Right. Let's say she's a 20 and then you find out later she's got she's got herpes. Where does that 20 go down to? I mean, let's not even go that far. Let's say she's a 20 and you find and then she decides to hit get, get you hit off and you oh she take pulls the panties down and the place smells like an oyster barn. Right. Now, is she still a 20? Absolutely not. That's okay, how about right how about this? She's still as bad as she is, but she's bipolar. And there's a possibility you could get stabbed dealing with her. And she's a 20. What is she now that she's bipolar? Probably a 10. Okay. You're out so, here stressing over a 10. <laughs> but here's what I'm saying. You all right, you 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 stressing yeah. over over a uh, 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 badass ugly bitch. Right. So like do you do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody yeah. just because of their looks, they don't you don't sell your manhood and your credibility be for, for somebody just because they're attractive. They still may be trash. Don't get me wrong, looks and, and the aesthetics are a variable that are are important, but it's not the only thing. You feel me? So I what I would do if I was you, I wouldn't I wouldn't respond. I would ask wait till she hits me up and then ask her why. Don't even be mad. Why? Why are you calling me? And let her explain. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to see what you was doing. Yeah, well, I'm not really, I'm not really for that because, I mean, you you weren't interested before. What's different? Can you imagine the stutter that you would get from her because you get? And if you don't get a stutter, then she won shit anyway. She wasn't interested in the first place. You feel me? Yeah. All right. Brother, thank you, thank you, man. I didn't mean to go hard on you, but Thanks, I man, I appreciate. No, it's, it's what I needed, man. Like that's why I called. I didn't want anything sugar coated or anything like that. Well, you ain't gonna get it here. I don't. I don't have none. I don't have no, no sugar. We I got any sh- for a long time. All respect, you know. <laughs> all right, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Have a right. good night. We ain't got no sugar back there, right, Mike? None. None here, man. <laughs> Not even under the tape. None. Shit. So if, if you're coming here for sugar, you came <laughs> to the wrong place. 
Uh, we, is that it, Mike? Should we shut this down? Yeah, it's ten. I think. Yeah. All right. Let me. Uh. Yeah. So I, I just want to say this real quick. You, y'all gotta. If you're on these dating apps, your first move is to get off the app, to get to a phone call, get to a phone call, talk to somebody on the phone, FaceTime, and don't take no for an answer. If you got a woman, I, I don't. I don't get how. If you got a woman who you want to eventually be having sexual relations with, right? Uh, the fact that she doesn't want to talk to you on the phone is not a good sign. <laughs> yeah, people would rather have a maybe for six months than a no on the first day. <laughs> yeah, dog, I'm not wasting my time, but that maybe that's because I'm I'm dying as we <laughs> speak. So, <laughs> yo, that is true. I feel like that is a young man's game to just waste. Like, <laughs> yeah, not even just six months is a low estimate. Stop. There's dudes who have like are on year twelve of like telling the girl like, come on. And usually for some goofy bitch who you're not gonna like in six months anyway. Um. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Don't forget to follow us on, follow me on Instagram, the Dante Nero Man School 202 uh, YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the bell. So every time we get we go live, you get hit up and let know. Let we we let you know. Um, anytime we post something new, you know, uh, Dante Nero.com. Also, Facebook, Man School 202. We're gonna be streaming on that too soon enough. Uh, Dante Nero.com, click on consult. Yo, I love y'all. Peace. We out of here. Man School 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't.